Hello, Micro here. Today using Photoshop and After Effects CS4, I'm going to show you how to make an animated signature. The theme for the signature is Sins of a Solar Empire, the video game. Now you need to make sure you already have everything done that you need done in Photoshop. Creating the starry background, um, I have the planets, the ships, and the text is all done. Although you can do text in After Effects, since we're keeping this simple, I already did my text in Photoshop. So I'm just going to show you the end result here, and then we'll open up After Effects and work with everything in there, and I'll show you how to put it all together. It's pretty simple. We're just zooming in on the fire planet, having the fighters go by, the ship go by, and then have the words come into view and zoom into us. So now on to After Effects. So let's go ahead and start a new composition come up to the top, composition, new composition, and we're going to set our our size here. I like mine to be 300 by 100, and so when I work in After Effects I always double it. That way you shrink it down to size and it looks better. You may have to unlock this lock aspect ratio to be able to manipulate the width and the height to get it just where you want it. Um, composition name, name it whatever you want. Comp 1 is fine for this uh, tutorial and then duration. You're going to want to change this to give an overall length of your video. I want mine to be 10 seconds with each of these things that I'm putting in the video to last two seconds. And then go ahead and press OK. Now at this point we have everything set up. Now we need to bring in our Photoshop files that we're using. First thing I'll do is I'll grab the stars, drop and drag them, Volcano Planet, the fighters, the big ship, and finally the words. Now at this point it's pretty easy to work from here. What I'm going to do is take the stars first because I want that to be my ultimate background that's always there and just drag it on over over our comp composition video. And you can see it's way too big but that helps keep up the quality of the video by having things bigger and then shrinking them down just simply grab one of these corner or side anchor points and you can manipulate it. Now it can be larger than your composition and that's just fine. And as you can see it opened up down here in the lower section and to keep me from messing with it or moving it out of adjustment after I do each of these I'm going to go ahead and lock the layer. Next I'm going to go ahead and grab the volcano, bring it over, resize it, move it to the position that I want it in, I guess that's a lot bigger than I thought it was, but that's quite all right. Now what we want to do is, since I'm going to have this zoom in to make it look like it's far away and then we're getting closer to it, is I want to have it at its smallest position when I place it. As you can see, it's not even a complete circle. It doesn't have to be. You can manipulate quite a few different things here. So that's about where I want it to be. Now let's go over here into our composition folder down here on the left and we'll open up this transform by clicking on these arrows. Now what we're going to be doing is scaling and we're going to scale this up. So what we want to do is first click on the stopwatch on scale. This will give us a keyframe. This is where it's going to start when you first um, start playing is it's going to start with the small planet. Now then I want to have the planet get larger over two seconds. I've designed this so that everything is done in two second intervals just to make it easier and then I want to go ahead and scale this back up to 100 percent. You can simply just grab and drag or you can highlight it and type in 100 percent and see it automatically gave me a keyframe. So let's move the timeline. Now we're going to start with moving in the fighters. Adjust them to the proper size. That looks pretty good and what you want to do is find the position where you want them to start off screen and leave them there. Come back down here, open up your transform, and if, and again we're going to be doing position because we want it to start at this position and then end at another position. So you click on the stopwatch for position, gives us the keyframe, move the timeline forward to two seconds, grab the ships, and have them end up where you want them to be. And you can see this line is following them. This shows the arc or the straight line of where they're going to end up flying across the screen. And as soon as you let go of it, it creates another keyframe. Now we can scroll back and watch them fly across the screen. 
but I don't want them to just go in a straight line. I want to give them a little bit of an arc. So I'm going to go ahead and stop moving the timeline here in the middle somewhere and go ahead and grab this line that they're on and adjust that to give them a little more character. And of course it automatically gives us a keyframe. So we can go back and we can watch them fly across the screen. But I don't want to stop there. I also want to add in a second set of fighters. So we'll go back to two seconds. We're going to go ahead and lock this layer, minimize it. We're going to grab the fighters again and bring them on over. Remanipulate their size. Make them look a little bit different. And of course, place them where you want them to start from. You know, open up backup transform. They're going to start us at this position. So we give them the keyframe by hitting the stop watch. We're going to move the time forward by two seconds. Then we're going to go ahead and grab the ship and move it where we want them to end up after two seconds. And that of course gives us the keyframe. We can move back and we can see both ships are moving. And I'm just going to go ahead and leave this line straight. And of course I'm going to lock the layer and hide it. Now I'm going to grab the big ship, drag it on over. Oops, I opened up a new layer because I accidentally double clicked on it. Shrink it down to size, move it off screen where I want it to start. Then I'm going to open this up so I can get into the transform. And again, we're going to be doing position, so I give it a keyframe, move the time forward two seconds. Then I'm going to grab the ship, pull it across, let go of it where I want it to stop, and there we have it. We've got the little fighters, the big ship, and then I go ahead and lock and close the layer. Now I'm going to go ahead and bring in the words, Sin of a Solar Empire. Now you can do this in After Effect, but for the sake of this video, I'm just going to go ahead and use these ones that I've already made in Photoshop. Now what you want to look at here is this little cross here that looks like a bullseye is going to be your anchor point, meaning the words will rotate around it. So when you um, change the zooming on it, it's actually going to want to zoom down to that position and then zoom up where you have it end at. What we're going to want to do is move this anchor point into the middle of the words so it looks like it's coming straight at us. So go ahead and click the arrows, open up transform, look at the anchor point, and we're actually going to move the words down to where they center on that anchor point. And of course if we mess up here we can always um, just hit the reset button. It doesn't have to be perfect. And that's about where I want it to be. Now we're going to have to get in here and change the scale. Right now the words are at 100 percent. We're going to have to grab the numbers and scale them down. And I want them to start right about there. So go ahead and click the time stopwatch, gives us the anchor point. Move our time forward to where we want it to end, which is two seconds. And then go ahead and scale it back up. I find it's easier just to highlight it and click on 100%. And that automatically gives us a new keyframe. So now we can go ahead and go through and just quick watch it and make sure everything's good. And of course it isn't. You can see the words right there in the background. So there's a pretty easy way to fix that. Just grab this blue bar in our timeline and drag it all the way over. This blue bar being across the whole screen shows that this particular layer that we did is always present. And we don't want the words to always be present. We just want them to start right when the ship gets off screen and end at being 100%. Now at this point we're going to export it. So you go to File, Export, wherever that is, there it is, and we want to save it as a QuickTime movie because we're going to open this back up in Photoshop and turn it into a GIF image and shrink it down to size. So save it to where, whatever folder you like. Here we are back in Photoshop. We imported our um, video and what we're going to have to do is we're actually going to have to change the image size. So go to image, image size, just cut it down to half of what it is, 300 by 100, 
click OK, go ahead and convert, and it makes it small like we want it to be. Now we're going to have to export this into a GIF. So you go to File, Save as Save for Web Device, choose GIF, and then you're going to have to come down here and change the looping to forever. Otherwise it's only going to loop once. You can go ahead and click Save. And there you have it. Please be sure to rate and comment on this video, and I sure hope you enjoyed it. Thank you.